but the problem is there's all the leftover junk food and all that kind of thing and you're almost like what am I supposed to do with this like last night you promised yourself you were so into it it was like I don't care about those leftovers I'm not touching them I got willpower of steel and like next day you'd be like seeing everybody else eating the food and you're all you're all like but but me what about me what is going on well, you are here with Kylie Pax Australia's emotional eating coach you know the drill oh my god do I do I know the drill Australia's emotional eating coach and I'm here to empower you to take control of your relationship with food create a body and a life that is sexier than a hot fudge sundae because you get to do it all on your terms on your terms I did just want to ask you though, you know, because this is a thought that's really occurred to me over the last week. And I thought, think back to where you were this time last year. What has really changed? Like, has anything really changed, really? Because I just thought, you know, for me previously, this is what I used to do. I would start my new year January 1st, like thinking, oh, pixies are going to twinkle all over, like stars are going to twinkle and pixies are going to dance, right? Around my, um, around my January 1st. I will never crave junk food again. It's going to be amazing because prior to that you would stuff your face like all the way up until Jan 1st and then Jan 1st hits and you find much to your dismay that you have a certain level of motivation because it's January 1st but the problem is there's all the leftover junk food and stuff from Christmas and the New Year's celebrations and all that kind of thing and you're almost like what am I supposed to do with this like last night you promised yourself you were so into it it was like I don't care about those leftovers I'm not touching them I got willpower of steel and like next day you'd be like seeing everybody else eating the food and you're all you're all like but, but me, what about me? I feel like I really need my glasses, so I'm I'm kind of like my vision is a little fuzzy, but I'm acting like I can see you all clearly, but I totally can't. Then you end up eating all the junk food again, because you just do. Then you gain weight, and what I would do is spend the entire year, and I did this for like so many years of my life, spent the entire year losing the weight that I had put on and then gaining it back and then losing the weight that I had put on and then gaining it back and I would easily do that easily three times over the course of the year like lose 15 kilos sort of thing or 10 or 5 whatever however things were fluctuating gain it back like we I've reached my goal eat, 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 eat gain it back whatever was going on and this would happen year after year after year until I just saw nothing changes it's January 1st again and I'm exactly where I was last year, if not a little heavier, because I just spent the entire last year losing and gaining and losing and gaining the same amount of weight over and over again. And I just thought, how many of us can say the same sort of thing for our own lives, whether it be with weight or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, you know, any new habits you're trying to set up, you would spend like a few weeks or months, maybe even if you're very diligent, establishing these uh, habits into your life. And then we go, great, I've arrived I've got it now and we drop the habits and then we wonder why the things that we didn't the old things that we were trying to get rid of have come back, Baby, come back. And it's just really like can really be fuddless, but the point is we're just like rats running on treadmills, like round and round and round, and I just thought this has to stop. Like it just has to stop. Okay, here's what I want to talk to you about when it comes to making a long-term transformation, because you know, I speak about this often, the diet industry um, I, I'm not I'm not into slamming people like I just sort of don't really can't be bothered putting my energy in that direction So I'm not gonna be like a eh, diet star like whatever I don't care right That's what I often say like if you want a diet go on a diet do your thing right do your thing girl go for it Diets will help you lose weight of course they will right otherwise they would have they would just stop being around diets will help you lose weight but they're not designed to help you lose weight long term long term like you can't generally you won't go on a crash diet and for the rest of your life forevermore be eternally skinny like that's just not a thing so this is what I was sort of saying that like you can go on a crash diet two weeks before your holiday in Bali but understand when you come back all that weight will come back with you like of course, because crash diets suck because they're uncomfortable and they're painful and they're hideous. Hello, who wants to deprive yourself of all the yummy foods, right? So then by the time you get to your fabulous Balinese holiday, you're like, before, before, you, before you even get there, you're on the plane with the peanuts. Give me the peanuts. The crappy food that you don't even care about. You're like the free food. Oh, let me eat because you've been starving for so long. Starving, right? So this is how we roll. And then you're going to come back. And of course, you know, all the weight's going to come back with you. Diets, of course, they will help you achieve weight loss. But don't expect it to stay off. Like, don't expect this time next year to still be at that weight. I personally, um, the last crash diet that I did, 
like it's, I don't even think it could be described as a crash diet. It was brutal. That was like a car accident where you know people end up where um there are, there are casualties, casualties, right? I ended up keeping the weight off because I stopped that one. I didn't. This is my, the highlight of my diet in Korea. I didn't eat for forty days. Right, so I'm going to put a disclaimer on this live stream. Like little, it's like one of those moments that children don't try this at home. <laughs> don't try this at home. I stopped eating for 40 days because I thought I'm done with this. Like I'm just done with it. Right? I want this weight off my body. I'm tired of feeling out of control around food. Food is clearly my enemy, so I'm just not going to. I'm just not going to consume it. And I didn't for 40 days. I did it under the under the guise of going on a juice cleanse. I just thought I'm going to go on a cleanse, and my body. And I seriously thought, like seriously, I thought my body was going to heal itself of every ailment that it ever had, and stay disease free from every ailment that could ever be. And I was going to be so healthy, I would glow, and you would see me come down the street because I would have like a halo of health and wellness. And angel wings would sprout out my back, and I would be so amazing. And people would just stare at me in awe and go, "Wow, she's so healthy," which is BS, right? That's not a thing. So you can look really healthy, but you know, you're still going to suffer your, I, I really thought I would never have to enjoy any kind of pain again for the rest of my life. Well, no, because it turns out that after that crash diet was when my marriage fell apart, which was pretty freaking painful, like to, to be honest, you know, it really was. So I lost 10 kilos on that diet. 40 days with no food and of course you know if any of you that just sort of know me i i am very um pedantic about the way i do things and everything has to sort of be very systematic and i chose 40 days because i thought that's how long jesus was in the desert for 40 days so it's like a holy number so i'm for sure to succeed this time for sure because it's 40 days like i had this nexus like direct line to heaven right because i'd chosen 40 days and so this was how it's gonna roll so i did not eat for 40 days i drank only raw juices uh no fruit juices too high in sugar Ooh, fructose Ooh, the devil no uh fruit juice no fruit juice only vegetable juices for 40 days right it sucked it sucked uh, I did lose weight. Now, I will just put my second disclaimer for the live stream there because I had no intention of talking about any of this. I really didn't know what I was going to talk about when I got on, to be honest. I just wanted to say hi to everybody. Um, I, I will, my second disclaimer is that I didn't just randomly do it like a total more, although it was a moronic thing to do, I did see my GP. I did see my doctor and she monitored me throughout. So it doesn't, it's really no justification. But, um, you know, I did do that. So, so what happened was I did lose, um, I did lose a ton of weight and I ended up looking like a stick insect stick like this, right? It wasn't even attractive. It wasn't like, Ooh, she's lost weight. It was like, she's sick. Like, well, um, actually, are you okay? Like, are you going through some kind of treatment? Like what's wrong with you? That's how I looked. Didn't look good. Did not look good. However, this is where my point was going. I kept that weight off from that brutal diet. I kept that weight off for uh, a year and a half. A year and a half you know what it took to keep that weight off I became so scared of food so terrified of food that I, I just I couldn't cope like I couldn't cope with eating anything because I just thought I was gonna get fat and as I did start to gain the weight back because hello you do um, I was just traumatized you traumatized me because I just thought I can't go through this again I can't meanwhile here I am all the weights gained back and I'm alive everything's fine I'm not a drummer. We make, as human beings, just as a matter of human natural instinct, we make 95%. I just want to pause for emphasis here because this is big. We make 95% of our decisions are made by our emotions, by how we feel. Can we just like breathe through that one? 95% of our decisions are made from this place, like this place. I don't know, I don't feel like it. No, I'm tired. I don't want, I want a can, I don't want the salad. I want the pizza. Like, I don't like them or I don't know what that's about. I don't want it right here, my whiny voice, because it's me. That's me. 95% of it, I don't want to get up. I don't want to, I don't want to go to bed. I don't want to. 95% of our decisions are made by how we feel. And then all I want to say about that is, is it any wonder that you then look back at where you were this time in your life, at this time where you were in your life, this time last year, and then you look at where you are this year and you find there's virtually no difference, if there is. 
if there is virtually no difference and you're like damn you know that's a whole year gone and now we're feeling a bit desperate like i'm gonna make my promises again of how i'm gonna do and be and make everything happen this year but you don't you don't because you're still carrying out the same patterns and doing the same things and yes being the same person that you were we want you to be the same person i don't want you to change but i am saying be aware of your own games that you play with yourself right we play games and I was sort of saying this to somebody the other day and I can't remember who that we are I swear we could all be like the most monumental solicitors and attorneys on the earth because we are our own best negotiators you know but you ate pizza the two nights already this week yeah well you know I didn't go shopping and I haven't had time to do any cooking and so you yeah, whatever like just give me the speed dial get dominoes right just get it so it's only one more time I'll start again tomorrow and we've got all the excuses and all the reasons we are our own best negotiator when we want to do the things that we want to do when the the little part of our brain pops up that just goes hello how about the things that you say you want how are the things that are actually gonna make you happy and help you progress and move forward in life how about the things that are actually going to end the battle with your body and food not keep it running and we're like later for you later for you right there's always an excuse there's always a reason so I want to say to you if 95% of our decisions are made from that place and we end up with the later for you then what when I say that to you I don't just say it for random information that you can sound smart at your next dinner party <laughs> I say it because it gives you a whole heck of a lot of power when you realize that 95% of the time you are just spinning yourself BS stories to get you know whatever it is the the two-year-old version of you wants then it's like are you for real it's time sometimes we have to step up and be our own parent and it's very boring like it's so boring who wants to tell themselves to go to bed at a decent hour at night nobody a two-year-old doesn't want to hear about it a 10 year old doesn't want to hear about it a 40 year old doesn't want to hear about it we never want to hear about it right we don't but sometimes we just have to do that you know nobody tells us when you turn 18 or 21 or whatever it is that now it's your responsibility to be your own parent we just think that we should magically feel like doing the right thing all the time and that when we don't we're a failure so I just want to tell you you know you're not you're not we are instinctually designed for pleasure which is good this is why we're all still here reproducing <sighs> Because we are instinctually designed for pleasure and we're not designed for pain. So if you, if you have linked pain with going to bed and discomfort with going to bed on time or pain and discomfort with getting up on time or pain and discomfort with doing the weekly shopping so that you do have some half decent food in the fridge that you're not left, you know, emotionally eating the cornflakes out the cereal box and crying because, you know, you had a crappy day at work, like whatever, you know, we need to, I, I'm not a big, um, like, pre-plan pre-plan and make sure you've got all your meals pre-prepped and I'm just like oh my god I don't have time for that sort of like that just bores me to tears like those people that spend their Sundays they're like making their little meals and put them in the friggin containers in the fridge I'm just like oh my god get a life like I just don't care enough I do not care enough because I really and let me tell you what set me free from that because I used to do all that stuff of course I did what set me free was I learned to trust myself enough to know that I can trust myself to make a good choice in the moment at the time that it's required I don't have to have stored up in the freezer that I better eat it now because I made it like that's crap that's whole drill sergeant type mentality you don't need to control yourself to that degree if it wait, wait, and, and another disclaimer if it makes your life easier right if you're doing it because it just makes your life easy it's like but I don't have time when I come home and it's 9 30 and I'm so hungry and I just want to eat do it if you're doing it as a matter of convenience and making your life easier but if you're doing it as like your whole meal prep weight loss do the thing follow the you know the plan then just like seriously just give it up just give it up life is too good and too exciting for you to be sitting around wasting your weekends prepping your meals that's all i'm gonna say to you that's all i'm gonna say today anyway and for now um look i really feel that i as a matter of 
responsibility i want to offer you an avenue if you if you do have a conflicted relationship with food if you are fighting the battle between food and your body and you just have never been able to get that issue sorted if if you're constantly fighting with food day in day out and you think about it from the moment you wake wake up to the moment you go to sleep and you're just constantly fighting that internal battle feel free to reach out to me and then of course we have ditch the diet boot camp so you can go to www why do i say that who says www these days no Go to kyliepacks.com forward slash bootcamp, kyliepacks.com forward slash bootcamp. You will find all the information there and um, you know if you need it. You know if you need to check the page out. I know how life-changing this program is. It's changed the life of thousands of people now. So, I, you know, we don't fool around over there. We mean business. And as always, please do remember, the only person with the power to change your life is you when you step up and don't make 95% of your decisions by how you feel. That's when you're really going to start making progress. And that is when you've got what it takes and you will be loved. Beautiful people, I will catch you all very soon. Have an awesome day and a beautiful evening. Until then. Bye.